Welcome back everyone. I wanted to show you some of the colors that we're using today and see if this setup's more, or if you can see it better than what, you know, we're usually was doing. So, um, here's all the colors. These are metallics. Some of them, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I've mixed a little opaque color with it too because metallics tend to look like gel sometimes. So, uh, all these metallics I use are from Deco Art. I have gold that I get from Basics that I like to use a lot, but for small things, um, they're pretty cheap. So, um, I'm using black, festive green, sapphire, ruby. This is a mix of the blue and the red. It's a primary magenta, and then a, a really dark eggplant metallic. So... Uh, I'm going to show you how I mix up my white paint for the base coat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take my gloss medium, which I'm about out of, so just barely had enough to make everything. I like to do in all my paint. A 20% paint, 60% Floetrol, and 20% Gloss Medium. And the Gloss Medium just gives it a nice smooth finish when you're done. And helps to not have all those divots. So I usually stir in my gloss into my white paint. And get it good and mixed up before I mix with the Floetrol because I really want the gloss in the pigments mixed together and that'd be the first thing they have to cling to is the gloss and then break it up with the flow trowel. This is how I mix all my paint. The only difference is when I use uh, the colors I want to put silicone in or the dimethicone is what I use. I don't use, well that's not true. Anyways, I put two or three drops of dimethicone in my colors. Uh, one of the things I do when I do a flip cup is spray the cup that I'm going to flip with blaster silicone and then wipe it out with a paper towel. And um, then I put my flip cup pores in there with dimethicone in it. What that does is gives you small cells from the silicone and multicolored. And it also gives you huge cells from the dimethicone. So you get a nice mix. But gloss medium tends to give you that honey consistency that you're looking for. All the pigments and things uh, flow together. And they stick together and pull each other off the stick with them. And that's what you're looking for. Um, it's just the next one pulls the next one so you get a beautiful stream in, instead of drips but I don't put any dimethicone or silicone in my white or in my black ever and so I just wanted to do a little video to show you how I mix my paints what colors we're going to be using and things like that Looks good. Okay. I also want to show you how I prep my canvas in this video. Also, these are the tools. I'm going to be swiping with these paintbrushes and this. And that's about it very small it's 11 by 14 so this this is what I drew up yesterday and I thought I went through it in my mind and thought which way should I try and I wrote all those notes down and then I take my canvas after I draw this I drew it to the about right size to fit on this canvas nicely 
So I take my drawing and I put this ink paper. I've had this sitting around. I don't even know where uh, or why I had it, but I had it and tried it one day and it works really good. Sometimes it lifts, but not very often. And I've never noticed it enough to be bothered with it. So then I just put my drawing on here. Line it up from top to bottom where I want it. I don't measure, I just eyeball it. And then go over it with your skewer, like this. And what you're left with is this. So now you have your guidelines, you know where everything's supposed to go. Got a clear picture of what you're doing. Uh, what we're gonna do is start in the middle. I'm gonna do this area here and these horns. And then we're gonna fill it in with the white background. And I think I'm gonna let it all dry for a week at least. And then we'll come back and paint the legs on top and do a little bit of shading. I like to put a little shading around the bottom so that it looks like um, those bugs that are up on scientific examples, you know, on a wall. That's what I'm kind of going for. So there's that. And then I wanted to show you what I did yesterday and today. What I do is get the colors I want and then go through my notes and see how I thought I should swipe it and do a bunch of test runs. Now these kind of look crappy because they don't hold up when you put a bunch of paint on them because they're just paper plates. But it gives you a good idea when you first get started of what look you're going for. So I ended up deciding on this look right here because it had all the colors in it. It's real nice. This come out looking really bad, all this. Um, and then when I decided about what I wanted for the rear end, I went to the head and I had these two right here. And so I'm going to do something in between these two, a little more green than this one and a little more definition than in this one. So then I went to the neck. I tried this style, which really, I liked it at first. It just went yuck. And then I did this with the bamboo skewer, and I thought that was really pretty. It's just kind of a drag technique. You drag your paint around and put it where you want it. You get these beautiful lines and things, so I decided on going with this kind. And then here's going to be an example of the horns that are on the beetle here and here. Here's one and here's one, so I haven't really decided. I don't like either one of them. I don't see any cells developing. Which, this one had more when I did it. And so, um, we'll probably go with this one. But anyways, that's the pregame. And that's how I do these. Whether it's the fish, I don't do it with the feather. Because the feather you can um, just kind of swipe out without needing to go through all of this. It's a lot easier. And I will be doing a feather soon because a lot of people like them. And I think that... It'll go over good, so stay tuned for the next video. It'll be part two, and we'll get started. Thank you. Have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe.